The year was 1966. I'd just graduated from university and, feeling unready for steady employment, I decided to spend a year taking an education course at Teachers College. Checking the college calendar, the first thing I found was that the rules required a certificate of moral character, signed by a minister or a rabbi, assuring the administration that you were either a Christian or a Jew. So, I went to my father's priest, and he signed the form for me. He told me, Johnny, I do this all the time, even for people I've never seen before. So, I registered and became a full-time teacher trainee. After registering, I strolled out onto the campus. Hey, you! Get off the grass! Right away, I got the impression that I'd broken some rule. I had. Walking on the grassy oval was forbidden to students until they'd graduated. Already, I was starting to have second thoughts about being a teacher. Then I ran into Jack, an old friend from university. Jack was like a lot of other people at the college. He had no desire to be a teacher. There were, of course, a few odd people who were eager to teach. I could imagine the classes they would teach someday. Bill, for instance, introducing the ideas of dialectic materialism to the very young. Or Sally, whose ideal class consisted solely of silence and decorum. Or Steve, who would champion sexual abstinence to the little girls in his sex education class. Most of them seem to have some axe to grind. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power, and the glory. But if prospective teachers were a strange lot, the professors who taught us seemed even stranger. Like Mr. Whithall, for instance. He was fanatically concerned about our personal appearance. He wouldn't let anyone into class without a tie, and he was constantly flicking threads and bits of <sighs> dust and dandruff off his suit. He invariably arrived late to class, taught us nothing, and left early. One day, we all went to tour a high school. When I showed up at the door, the principal wouldn't let me in. He said my hair was too long. He was having a lot of trouble with long hair, getting the kids to cut it short. The next day, I got called down to the office. An advisor told me kids must be taught to conform in the little ways or in later life they might not conform in the big ways. So, what could I do? I got a haircut. Ah! <gasps> and then, the day I'd been dreading arrived. The start of the practice teaching could, session. Could anyone t t tell me w which city I'm pointing at n n now? New York? Rome, Venezuela, Chile, Pioneer Square, uh, Mexico, China, Montreal, Oswego. Correct. It is Vancouver. Now, let us consider the many and various ways in which Vancouver is important to us, not only being a large city on the western coast of our great nation, but also being an important importer of important products and other things like that and other similar... 
I thought it all went pretty smoothly, but the regular classroom teacher didn't. She didn't like the way I structured my lesson, the way I spoke to the kids, or even the way I dotted my eyes. What is the smallest country in Europe, children? Johnny? Luxembourg? No, Johnny. We will consider Luxembourg to be a part of Germany. For our purposes, Belgium will be the smallest country in Europe. The one thing I learned from this teacher was that if you don't know something, make it up. Another teacher I learned from was Mr. Faria. He told me never to use any audiovisual equipment. He said the kids would break it or steal it. In the first lesson, he said, grab the smallest kid and beat the hell out of him. He figured this was the surest way to get their respect. After the practice teaching session, I got called to an advisor's office, and he ran through some of the criticisms that had been made of my teaching. He said I was sloppy, disorganized, effeminate, and too friendly with the kids. He suggested that I might be going into the wrong profession. Many students called it quits at that point, but I decided to stick it through to the end. At the end of term, we had our final exams. And then there were the interviews. Ah, oh, Mr. Weldon. Yes, I, I, I am Mr. Weldon. I, I would like, I, I would... I, I think I, we have all the information we need here. Hmm, didn't do too well on your practice teaching, did you, Mr. Oh, Weldon? I, I can explain, I, I can explain that. I, I, I can, I, I, I... Well, you'll hear from us if we need you. Thank you very much, Mr. Weldon. Next. Some of the others got teaching contracts, but by the end of the year, one thing was certain, there'd be no apple for Johnny.